The Robert Redford movie Truth is out, and as we've been telling you, it cast Dan Rather and his producer Mary Mapes in an extremely positive life with a discredited story a decade ago that ended their careers at CBS. The President of the United States may have gone AWOL from the military. Tonight, we have new information on the President's military service. Here's to a great story. Somebody has got to confirm those memos. This isn't a trial. This is a hunt. And joining us now for the Z Block is David Zerwick, television and media critic for the Baltimore Sun. I was fired up about this movie because I did a lot of investigative reporting yeah. on this at the time. And I think this is one of the biggest journalistic embarrassments of all time. What's your review of the movie? Uh, the movie, I'm upset about the movie. I wanted to not be upset. You know, you and I went head to head on this as reporters. So we both were deeply steeped in this movie. So I was just as excited about it. Here's what troubles me. I think there's an easy way to get through all the ideology of this, is that this was simply really bad journalism. Right there when Dan Rather, that little clip when he says, hey, we need somebody to confirm those memos, that's what they didn't do. They didn't confirm the memos, but the movie's got him saying do it, and they didn't. And the memos, of course, who are supposedly written 30 years earlier about George W. Bush supposedly being AWOL from the Texas Air National Guard. Uh, why would Robert Redford, who played Bob Woodward in one of the great newspaper movies, of all time want to rehabil rehabilitate rather based on a book by Mary Mapes who was fired as a producer yes. over this very story and of course rather ultimately lost his anchor job and his CBS purchase. Oh, I have no idea why Robert Redford does it but when you have Robert Redford and Kate Blanchett this is not a cartoon movie I mean this is like a serious production and Redford is the power of this movie here's the scene that really got me at the end uh, everybody's caving on this, and Dan Rather's making all the, Redford as Rather's making yeah. all these speeches about how the business changes. He says, I was there the day they found out they could make money with news, and that's all a reason, and CBS is all a bunch of cowards. And they show him at the end in profile, looking off in the hero, against the sky, heroic shot, invoking Bob Woodward, invoking Roy Hobbs from The Natural, this American hero. It's really, he, it's Dan Rather as the Western hero after the West is closed and the cattlemen and the money interests have taken over. That's what made me mad. It wasn't heroic what he did in this. It was bad journalism. I think, for my part, I don't think he was that involved in it. I think it was Mary Mapes driving his bus. And she, in one of the interviews that she's done promoting the movie, says, well, yes, we did bungle a bit, but we were in the, we within the normal journalistic range of bungle. Outrageous. It's an outrageous claim. In her book, which I read, in her book, she says what, you know, the what she says when I saw the bloggers start to attack this what I was looking at is a political jihad hatched in the radical conservative back rooms blah 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 very ideological kind of response and both rather and James Vanderbilt the director who were at a screening here in Washington and then a Q&A afterwards said they stayed very true to her book she's the source of this story so what do you think you're gonna get but I think for a lot of people who don't remember the details or maybe you're too young to have lived through this they will go to this movie and they will think that CBS was a craven corporation that refused for political reasons to stand by Dan Rather when in fact the story was horrible as an independent investigation later showed. Is it sad that Dan Rather at 83 years old is still clinging to this discredited story, still saying, well, the story was true even though we couldn't quite confirm the documents? Howie, I knew Rather well before 2004. I don't know if we've spoken since. I felt a little sad watching him in this Q&A, especially when he said, somebody said, well, if, this, if you got it right, he's saying they got it right. If you got it right, why did you apologize for it on the air? He said, I only apologize for the documents. Look at the transcript. I did look at the transcript, and he apologized for the story. Now he's recanting and telling another version of events. That is revisionist history. Yes. David Zerwick, thanks very much for joining us this Sunday.